is one of the most famous journeys in European history, the medieval pilgrim road to the city of Santiago de Compostela in northwest Spain, where legend has it that the apostle St. James was buried. For nearly a thousand years, pilgrims traveling to seek forgiveness for their sins have planted a cross at the gateway of Spain, the pass of Roncesvalles. J'espère arriver à la, à la date que qu'on s'est fixée. Monsieur, faites-vous partie de ceux qui vont à Compostelle pour se faire pardonner leurs péchés euh, Moi, c'est pas du tout ma motivation. Je ne pense pas. J'ai dû faire des, des fautes certainement, mais je c'est pas pour ça que j'y vais. Je crois pas, pas du tout. J'y vais parce que je suis croyant et voilà. puis j'ai lu aussi l'histoire de Jacques le Majeur et de la façon qu'il est qu'il est arrivé au large de Santiago dans sa barque. Puis c'est à peu près tout ce que j'en sais quoi. Here at Roncesvalles, the pilgrimage embraced another legend. In the year 778, Charlemagne's rearguard under Roland and Oliver was ambushed in these mountains and slaughtered, it was said, by Muslim invaders. It was powerful Christian propaganda for the reconquest of Spain from the Moors. And the legend lives on in Spanish folklore. In fact, the Moors had nothing to do with the slaughter of Roncesvalles. The culprits were fellow Christians, men of Spanish Navarre, outraged that Charlemagne, before leaving Spain, had pulled down the walls of their capital, Pamplona, leaving them defenseless against the infidel. But resurgent Christianity demanded heroes of the true faith. This was a holy war, and pilgrims who flocked to Spain were in no doubt who had won it. By the 13th century, the Emperor Charlemagne was described in the Golden Legend as God's warrior and the conjurer of miracles. On the eve of the day when Charles was to wage battle against Argoland, who had come back to conquer Spain, his soldiers were preparing for battle the next day. They embedded their spears in the ground outside their tents in the meadows. In the morning, they found them covered with bark and branches, held in the soil by roots. They cut them level with the ground. From the roots, a great forest sprang up. The men whose spears bloomed thus were those who would be killed and who were to join the ranks of the saints. The pilgrim road is paved with legends and mysteries. Beyond Pamplona, a 12th century octagonal chapel in a cornfield. Its shape suggests that the Knights Templars may have built it. Or it may have been attached to a refuge for pilgrims where they could seek shelter, and where, judging from bones found here, many died. L'homme, par nature, c'est un pèlerin sur la terre. Alors quand un chemin comme celui de Saint-Jac devient le chemin de l'Europe en, en un certain sens, c'est un phénomène socia social très important. Alors il faut faire attention à ce phénomène et il faut recevoir tout ce monde qui vient par des motivations différentes. Tiny chapels and great monasteries. These service the pilgrim roads in a grander way, as well as serving the political ambitions of the French Benedictine order of Cluny. The mother house of Cluny was the largest church in all Europe, as well as the wealthiest and the most privileged, responsible only to the Pope in Rome.
Cluny became the instrument for spreading the power and influence of the Vatican throughout Western Europe. By the 12th century, here in Spain, priories and monasteries under the authority of Cluny had sprung up all along the pilgrim roads to Santiago. Wealth poured in and charity poured out, a formidable double act. Le moins se sent lui aussi un pèlerin, dont lui connaît très bien les difficultés de ce gens qui laisse sa famille, sa maison, pour aller loin de, de sa patrie même et ont de, beaucoup de périls dans le chemin. Donc il faut les, ont besoin des de, de hôpitaux, ont besoin de, de manger, de dormir. Et alors les moines eh, qui sont toujours voisins, se sentent très voisins du peuple, peut-être plus voisins que de la hiérarchie religieuse, et avec ce mouvement fort qui est Cluny, et prennent la, la décision d'aider ces gens. Donc on commence à construire long le chemin des de monastères, des hôpitaux, des églises pour accueillir ce phénomène. Le pèlerinage aussi, c'est une ressource de biens. Donc, même le pèlerin aide beaucoup avec son argent ou son travail à édifier ces monuments magnifiques comme art, mais surtout qui ont un, un double fin. Accueillir le pèlerin et montrer comment la foi se manifeste dans des monuments importants d'architecture. In the 11th and 12th centuries, pilgrims were numbering hundreds of thousands every year. From all over Europe, they came on foot to save their souls. The pilgrim roads were the paths to heaven, the only insurance against divine punishment in an age that believed the day of judgment to be inevitable. As today, they travel in small groups, carrying their belongings, lodging wherever was available, taking in the sights as they passed the churches, the monuments, the shrines to Christian saints and martyrs. Do comparisons end there? Why do people do it today? Well, the curiosity, sometimes, because you see on the TV that a lot of people go to Santiago, that there is a lot of culture on the road, a lot of churches, a lot of history, and then, well, Dices, ¿y qué será? No? Y ganas de descubrir pues, qué es lo que hay detrás de todo eso. Y sí, llevamos una motivación religiosa fundamental. Vamos a, a visitar a Limina, a Limina Apóstoli, ¿no? O sea, al, a los fundamentos de nuestra fe, vamos a buscarla. Y vamos también con otra motivación importante que todos los días lo rezamos, que es pedir por la paz, por la paz especialmente en Bosnia y Herzegovina. Todos los días rezamos la oración de San Francisco, oh Señor, haz de mí un instrumento de tu paz. Porque queremos que es posible la paz en el mundo. Y es posible cuando seamos instrumento de paz. In medieval times, they'd have been a more motley band than today, like Chaucer's pilgrims. Among them musicians and storytellers, but also thieves and criminals, quacks, adventurers, whores. And of course, craftsmen, artisans, stonemasons. In the small town of Carrion de los Condes, the Church of St. James honors these traveling craftsmen who helped build the place itself. Those who worked in wood, in stone, in metal, as well as the cooks, the scribes, and numerous other trades. There were also roads to be rebuilt, the old Roman roads, and bridges, like this one built in the 11th century at Puente la Reina, where four main pilgrim roads become one. Naturally, an imposing church of St. James, with a west door in the style of the conquered Moors. Everywhere on his journey, the pilgrim was reminded of the legend of St. James. The amount of historical truth in it is extremely thin, but then myth is often more powerful than history, 
and this was a myth that helped bring about the reconquest of Spain. It's recounted here on an altarpiece inside this Templar's church at Villa Sirga, and on another painting of around 1500 now in Astorga. The source is once again the golden legend. He is known as the Thunderer on account of his temper. His sermons frightened the wicked, stirred the idle, and won him universal admiration for the profundity of his wisdom. The magician Hermogenes summons demons to seize James. The demons are paralyzed by an angel and place themselves under the orders of the apostle who sends them to fetch Hermogenes. Hermogenes is then converted by James. He prostrates himself at his feet and throws his books of magic into the sea. The Pharisees and the high priest Abiathar accuse James and his disciples of sedition. They are arrested. Herod Agrippa sentences James to be beheaded. After the execution, his disciples removed his body and carried it to a ship with its sails set. After four months, they reached the shores of Galicia, the kingdom of Queen Louve, who refused them refuge. She even advised them to hitch their car to oxen, which were in fact raging bulls. Her scheming failed, and the animals proved as gentle as lambs. At the sight of this miracle, the astonished queen gave up her palace in honor of St. James, so that it could be converted to a church. A fairy tale it may be, yet the road to Santiago is emblazoned with monuments inspired by it, like the Cathedral of Astorga. Faith threw up great works of art, and among the faithful pilgrims who rested at Astorga on his way to Santiago was St. Francis of Assisi. By St. Francis's day in the 13th century, the basic roads were mostly built. One man responsible for building them was a hermit and illiterate shepherd in what was then a region of dense forest and swamp. The town today bears his name, Santo Domingo de la Calvada, St. Dominic of the Causeway. And the priests here still enjoy recounting his miraculous deeds. Estamos en la Catedral de Santo Domingo de la Calzada. Una de las cosas más curiosas, sin duda, es el famoso gallinero. Unos peregrinos que venían de Colonia hacia Santiago de Compostela se hospedan aquí, en esta ciudad. La mesonera se enamora del joven Apuesto Gonet, el cual se muestra intransigente ante las peticiones que hace la mesonera. Para vengarse de él, le deposita unos objetos de plata, le deja marchar y le denuncia ante las autoridades. El robar objetos de plata en aquella época llevaba consigo la pena de muerte y morir ahorcado. Los padres consideran que es injusto. Acuden ante la tumba del santo y el santo le devuelve la vida. El joven que está en la horca le dice a los padres que está vivo porque el santo le ha devuelto la vida. Los padres emocionados van a contárselo al corregidor, el cual se ríe e incrédulo dice que ese está tan vivo como este gallo y esta gallina que yo me estoy comiendo. Al instante surgen las aves, se llenan de plumas y comienzan a cantar. ¿Dónde vas, peregrino? Con la mochila y la guitarra. Con la mochila y la guitarra. Y la guitarra para el camino. Y el algo largo el caminar. Bajo la fe del peregrino. Y que se va por el camino. Y que se va por el camino. The church of San Juan de Ortega was built by a disciple of St. Dominic in the heart of the Oca Mountains nearby, 
then one of the most dangerous regions for travellers, infested with wolves and bandits. To celebrate the pacification of the area, a 12th century sculptor carved with extreme tenderness the life of the Virgin Mary on one of the capitals. At the spring and autumn equinox, a shaft of sunlight falls on this precise spot. The sun's light, divine light. Medieval Christianity easily incorporated the spiritual into the physical world. Today's pilgrims tend to do the journey in a more sporting spirit, a cycling holiday, some 60 or 70 miles a day. Hikers, more leisurely, maybe 20 miles. Expiation of sins, not much in evidence. Its appeal, quite apart from the sights to be seen, is perhaps that here is a world not governed by technology, where people can taste a more gentle and supportive existence, take on a physical challenge which is not a competition. Au début, je devais partir avec un ami en bicyclette et puis en fait, il n'a pas pu venir à Londres. Au début, c'était des attentions purement culturelles, mais après, j'ai décidé de ne m'en aller toute seule. Et c'est devenu... Mes raisons ont commencé à changer pendant le chemin. J'ai commencé à penser à... pour des raisons plus spirituelles. Je commence, je commence à me connaître plus moi-même. On pense et j'aime être toute seule dans le chemin passé. Il y a beaucoup de pèlerins, mais ceux qui le font comme ça, que pour le sport, l'aventure, mais il y en a beaucoup qui, qui, qui ont cette foi religieuse, et ça se sent. Et vous, vous avez de la foi religieuse Religieuse, pas tellement, non, mais euh, le, le côté spirituel, oui, le côté personnel, oui, je l'ai. At Villa Franca, pilgrims too exhausted to travel further could obtain the same absolution they would have received had they reached Santiago itself. This is rough mountain country. Thankfully, the caretaker is also a physiotherapist. His name, Jesus. En mi casa, cuando yo era un niño, ya pasamos muchos, vamos, muchos algunos peregrinos. Muchos era un día que había cinco o seis. Ahora son seiscientos. quitando pesos de encima, para encontrarse liberándose del espíritu también. El, dolor, el tendón le duele porque se pone tenso. La, la concentración de energía negativa, yo lo que me doy de cuenta, sobre todo, cuando bajan en la cuesta abajo fuerte, se cargan en los talones, Y luego después al caminar en el asfalto les, les absorbe la energía. 
Les absorbe la positiva y descarga la negativa. Entonces se ponen tan cargados que lo que hay que hacer es un poco descargarlos, limpiarlos en la hora. He, ven, he venido dos días que, que, no, que, no, que no podía. Yo creía que ya, ya no llegaba aquí. It gets harder. The heat and dust of the Sierras are left behind. This is the gateway to Galicia, the province of Santiago, the beginning of the last lap. The mountain village of Febrero, with tents to protect travelers from the climate. The tiny church at Febrero dates from the 10th century. And here, under toughened glass, the pilgrim can venerate a miraculous chalice and dish in which wine once turned to real blood and the host to flesh before the eyes of a monk who had lost his faith. So, may I ask you your profession? Yes, I, I'm an army officer. I'm in the, uh, the, the Royal Military Police, in the Gendarmerie. Um, and I, I'm retiring in uh, four months' time and I finished my service. And uh, this also is a time for me to, uh, to think what I'm going to do with the, the next part of my life, to clean my mind, uh, to decide what to do next with my life. And this, this journey is, is particularly important because my daughter, uh, Victoria, died two years ago from cancer, and as did a friend of hers, uh, died at the same time as Victoria. And I agreed with her father uh, that I would come to Santiago and take a shell uh, which has uh, Victoria and Lucy's name on it uh, and leave it at Santiago in memory of uh, two beloved daughters. And uh, that's why I'm doing it. It is hard, it is not easy, but physical effort is very important uh, when you are uh, making a journey such as this. Perhaps physical hardship was always important. Roads to paradise were never supposed to be lined with roses. The signposts along the road were the great cathedrals, like Burgos. French pilgrims would have been reminded of their homeland. The Gothic cathedral was inspired by those of northern France. The spires were designed by an architect from the Rhineland, Juan de Colonia, John of Cologne. The Gothic dream of reaching for heaven. The south door is carved with figures from the celestial court. In the center, Christ is shown delivering his divine message to the four evangelists. Below, the apostles, holy book in hand, discuss doctrinal matters among themselves. The power of the written word, for the eyes of pilgrims who'd have been nearly all of them illiterate. And in one of the chapels of the cathedral, gloriously lit through the carved lantern, St. James. This time, St. James the warrior, slayer of the Moors, Santiago Matamoros.
This is the popular image of St. James everywhere in northern Spain, the propaganda image. The apostle who is said to have made over 70 appearances in battle, riding down the armies of Islam on his white charger, Santiago Matamoros. So, St. James, reborn as the Moor Slayer, becomes the Apostle Triumphant, saviour of Spain and the country's patron saint. He presides, he gives his blessing to Christian armies and to Christian brides. It was here at Clavijo, on the heights commanding the fertile plain of the Ebro, where the Matamoros legend was born. In the year 844, the apostle first appeared at the head of a Christian army and put a huge Saracen force to rout, personally killing 70,000. This was the first miracle, and in Spanish folklore, the turning of the tide, the beginning of the reconquest. 250 years later, the military order of St. James was founded. Its symbol, a cross, formed of a sword red with the blood of the Moors. Their power was comparable to that of the Knights Templars. Their role was to guard the holy places, to protect Spain from the infidel, police the areas reconquered. No one with foreign blood could be admitted to the order. The Moors still held the south of Spain under Lucia, and it was the knights who built an elaborate defence system throughout Castile against the threat of them surging north again. Of all these military installations, like this Templar's castle at Ponferrada, little but ruins remain. Reminders of a violent past amid the clutter of modern Spain. The big question is, what keeps the pilgrimage alive? For many centuries, it virtually ceased to exist altogether. The Reformation tore the church apart, discrediting the system of indulgences and the cult of holy relics, upon which the pilgrimage depended. In the 19th century, much church property was sold off, Monasteries and hospices fell into neglect. Since then, much has changed. The religion of God has become the religion of art. The medieval pilgrim took the road to Santiago for his sins. Today, the road itself has become the pilgrimage. The beauty of the landscape, the architecture, the romance of taking a walk through history, in its magnificence and its decay. The romance, too, of walking where, for a thousand years, hundreds of thousands have walked before. And just as in former times, pilgrims helped create the monuments lining the way, so today it's the tourists who help finance their restoration. Churches are no longer places of worship alone, but our cultural heritage. The 11th century church of San Martin at Fromista is one of the earliest pilgrim churches in all Spain. And a hundred years ago, it was in ruins. Since then, more than 300 carved figures around the roof line have been restored, plus, of course, the church itself. Originally, the church at Fromista was attached to a Benedictine monastery, one of so many along the pilgrim road to come under the authority of those church empire builders, the abbots of Cluny.
In our own times, rediscovering and reliving the past has become a hunger. We venerate the Middle Ages, much as the medieval pilgrim venerated the relics of Christian saints and martyrs. Music from the 13th century in the church at Fromista. Traditional dancing in the cloister at Nahara. Cultural events feed today's traveller with sweetened titbits of the past. All very delightful, yet how distant it can seem from the reality of medieval life and medieval faith. And then the modern pilgrim is brought up sharp. This is what confronted the traveller in the Middle Ages. The colours have faded, the carved figures would certainly have been painted. One has to imagine them as brightly coloured as the statuettes sold to tourists in souvenir shops. Here, spelt out in stone on the cathedral at Leon, was God's message. The archangel Michael holds a set of scales to weigh human souls. There was no compromise, no middle way. The choice lay between seeking forgiveness for one's sins, which opened up the gates of paradise, or being doomed to roast in hell for eternity. For the illiterate pilgrim, here was the Book of Life, the promise and the warning. These images represented the real world. The saints and the apostles, each identified by his own symbol, were an integral part of medieval daily life. They watched over mankind. They offered guidance. Figures of justice alerting humanity to its sins. Doctors healing its ills. They were models of faith, hope and charity. They offered the keys to paradise. Imagine a world in which this indoctrination was everywhere. The threat of doom sounded like a gong in your ears all your life. To be a pilgrim, renouncing the compass of this world was your only chance. Qu'est-ce que vous faites quand on vous vole vos affaires? On va commencer de nouveau. On y va chez Caritas, il te commence à donner un paire de pantalons, une blouson, une chemise, et, et là, doucement, doucement, on arrive à voir encore quelque chose. Pilgrims always had to rely on charity because they were poor. And in medieval Europe, poverty was a virtue. Hoarding money was a sin, avarice. Such a doctrine didn't apply, of course, to the church. Churches were expected to dazzle, to amaze, to overwhelm the pilgrim with a display of divine light, like these windows at Leon. After the fires of hell outside, inside rose the flames of the true faith, a revelation of light. One ambition at least unites the medieval pilgrim with his modern counterpart, to reach the city of St. James. Ich habe mir überlegt, dass viele vor mir auch schon diesen Weg gegangen sind und in der Tradition will ich das auch tun. 
Gott wird immer mit mir auf diesem Weg sein. Und wenn man in Santiago ankommt, dann ist man am Ziel. Und dieser Weg nach Santiago ist mir auch sinnbildlich ein Gleichnis für meinen Lebensweg, dann auch für dieses mein Leben hier irgendwie erspüren. The city of Santiago de Compostela and its glorious cathedral. Above the west front, twin towers raised to the church triumphant. At the entrance, worshippers bow down to rest their foreheads on the patriarchal brow of Noah, the savior of humanity. The ritual is a reminder of the essential purpose of the whole pilgrimage, to obtain forgiveness for one's sins. By popular custom, fingers are placed between the stems of the tree of Jesse. Overhead, the great sweep of the Portico de la Gloria, one of the supreme masterpieces of medieval art. The traditional old men of the apocalypse are here represented as musicians, a heavenly orchestra. In the center, the figure of Christ, accompanied by the evangelists, by angels, and by representatives of those who have been saved. Spain has been saved, purged of her infidels. Santiago is when St. James's Day, the 25th of July, falls on a Sunday. And on this day, all the solemn pomp and ritual of the Spanish church are brought out in honor of the saint. And by tradition, the king, in military uniform, offers a prayer to St. James in the name of all Spain. Señor Santiago, llegamos hoy ante vos para haceros de nuevo la secular ofrenda que en nombre de España entera la corona os presenta como agradecimiento por vuestro patronato. Y quisiera hacerlo como un peregrino más de los muchos que a lo largo de este año jubilar, el penúltimo del siglo, vienen del universo mundo para postrarse ante vuestro sepulcro en procura de paz espiritual y de reconciliación. Es difícil no experimentar sentimientos profundos suscitados por la fuerza ecuménica de vuestro carisma y por el recuerdo de que miles de cristianos dirigieron sus pasos hacia aquí a lo largo del tiempo, pero esa continuidad prodigiosa, lejos de fijar nuestra mirada tan solo en el pasado, nos hace sentir aquí la continuidad de un futuro que os pedimos, Señor Santiago, en paz, en justicia y en libertad para todos. A culminating piece of pure theater is the setting in motion of the huge censer known as the Botafumero.
Across the medieval cathedral, from transept to transept, swings the pendulum of the huge censer, designed to spread holy incense among the entire congregation of pilgrims at the climax of their journey. From all over the world, testimonies of Christian faith are recited at the feet of the Apostle. Whatever culture, whatever language, the message of the liturgy is universal. As no doubt were the earliest figures carved on the cathedral itself. Universal among people, universal in time. The author of the very first pilgrim's guide, Emery Pico, who came here about the year 1135, would have gazed at these very carvings of the temptation of Christ by demons. also that this woman was an unfaithful wife, compelled to kiss the head of her husband she had caused to be murdered. The city would have been just as crowded as today, perhaps more so, and the authorities were forced to be strict. No pilgrim was allowed to remain in Santiago longer than three days. For today's pilgrim, a last look at St. James the Moor Slayer, Santiago Matamoros, before the evening of St. James's Day and the symbolic burning of a mosque. How simple a message, the triumph of good over evil, of the armies of Christ over the armies of the infidel. This was the propaganda the medieval pilgrim was fed. One difference today is that the traveller has access to historical facts, including facts that were conveniently suppressed by the propagandists of the medieval church. 
These 12th century frescoes in the Royal Burial Chapel at Leon illustrate scenes from the New Testament, and wonderful they are. But experts will tell you that they reflect a form of Christian worship practiced under Islamic rule. In other words, the Arab conquerors of Spain did not, after all, crush Christianity. The worst they did was to impose a tax. But that kind of truth would not have helped the cause of Santiago Matamoros. The image of Christianity persecuted was too valuable and in turn justified Christians becoming the persecutors. On the instructions of Rome, all non-believers were exterminated or expelled. Buenos días, Buenos días. Eh, ¿Había sido alcalde de este pueblo? Sí, sí, durante ocho años. ¿Hace, ¿Y ahora hace tiempo que lo ha dejado? Sí, sí, ya va desde el 70, más o menos. El pueblo tiene tres nombres, porque yo siendo alcalde, el nombre, el, lo de Matajudío se quiso quitar porque parecía muy feo, por la ruta de, del Camino Santiago, porque todo lo que pasa de mata a judíos parece un hombre fuerte, y se le quiso quitar y le quisimos poner Castrillo de la Mota, y no nos lo autorizaron, no nos lo autorizaron porque es Valladolid, y está el Castillo de la Mota, y entonces dice que si hubiera habido un poco de confusión con Castrillo de la Mota y Castillo de la Mota, y entonces... En, por no ponerle, por quitarle el matar judíos, le pusimos castrillo de cabezón, porque aquí, en este pueblo, nació Antonio de Cabezón, el, fam, el famoso músico de Felipe II, ciego, de nacimiento. Y después, a última hora, como el mata judíos viene ya de, de atrás, para los del pueblo siempre será castrillo mata judíos. Y al fin pues se le sigue llamando Castillo Matajudíos. ¿Se mataron judíos aquí? Yo nunca he oído eso. O sea, ¿Vivían aquí? Que vivían en la mota, sí, debajo en las cuevas, sí, porque la mota está hueca. O sea, porque, entonces, ¿esto de mota qué es? Pues la mota, desde ahí, desde, es un montículo, es un montículo que se ve que según hacían las cuevas, y sacaban eso, y está hecho, o sea, que eso es artificial, el montículo ese es artificial, porque todo es hueco, que no es natural. Y los judíos vivían debajo en las cuevas. Y ahora es cuando ya, pues cuando les expulsaron a todos los judíos, es como hubo precisamente hoy a los gitanos, que, que hay gitanos por todos los sitios y antes eran judíos. Y a los gitanos, pues cuando no lo hacen es cuando no pueden. Ahí les habrá buenos y les habrá malos, naturalmente, como todo. Y a los judíos les expulsaron y entonces fue cuando eso ya se derrumbó, se, derrumbó, se han tapado las bocas. ¿Por qué vivían los judíos en, en los sitios subterráneos y los demás habitantes del pueblo no? Porque se ve que los, los habitantes, o sea, los vecinos de aquí, los españoles, por llamarles así, con los judíos pues no se podían ver y siempre estaban pues peleándose y eso. Y unos vivían, y sí, claro, estaban... Les tenían acorralados, o por decirlo de una manera, y ellos se, se resguardaban en las cuevas esas. The Jews, in fact, accounted for many of Spain's intelligentsia, doctors, lawyers. The invading Moors were sophisticated craftsmen. This 10th century monastery church was inspired by the architecture of the Muslim invaders. The reality was that in Spain before the reconquest, Muslims, Jews and Christians had lived side by side. This 13th century song tells of a miracle performed by the Virgin Mary for the benefit of a Moroccan king.
véritable adoration pour la Vierge, il a fait, euh, on peut considérer les cantigas comme l'équivalent spirituel des chants de Troubadour, qui étaient des chants à l'amour euh, le plus pur. Euh, et c'est dans ce sens que les cantigas représentent une apport extraordinaire, parce que c'est un mélange de, 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 de ces deux aspects, une sorte de synthèse, et c'est aussi une synthèse musicale dans le sens que c'est une, une musique qui reflète d'une manière extraordinaire le panorama existant à l'époque dans une Espagne qui encore est une Espagne où il y a les trois civilisations, la, la musulmane qui est là depuis quelques euh, siècles, la chrétienne et la juive. Et c'est ça qui a donné cette richesse d'instruments, cette richesse aussi des musiques populaires qu'on peut encore voir aujourd'hui en Espagne avec les cantes flamenco, avec les musiques populaires, avec tous les différents instruments qu'il y a en Espagne, la guitare, la vivelle des mains, etc. A synthesis of religions. The town of Saogun contains a wealth of churches built by Arab architects and craftsmen. In one church, La Pellegrina, under the rough plaster applied later by the Franciscans, the lace-like stucco of the Arab craftsman has been uncovered. Another church, St. James the Moorslayer, charges into battle under a roof constructed by his enemies. To make the journey to Santiago is also to see the medieval world with new eyes. <laughs> 